squad. Starring Lee Marvin. Lights and pull in over there. This one's still alive. Good thing there were only two of them. My name is Frank Ballinger, Detective Lieutenant, M Squad, a special detail of the Chicago Police. The morning after the Argonne Metals robbery, the newspapers praised the heroic actions of officers Dave Price and Gene Langley. Dave was a friend of mine. But then the captain called and told me to get down to the office, fast. The story behind the headlines had suddenly taken an ugly turn. I'm not accusing anybody. All I say is $30,000 was stolen from my safe and there's only $10,000 here. You're positive about the $30,000? Well, I've given Captain Thomas proof. Before my guard was knocked out, he saw two men with two bags. The officers only found one bag of money at the scene, Mr. Maxwell. Yeah, that's their story. Well, I believe them. These men have been under bank of man for the past year. Well, it's not that I'm accusing them, but, well, what's a man to think? A lot of things could have happened. Such as. Now, let me warn you, I never handled that money. Witnesses will tell you the safe wasn't open until it was blown open. The bag could have been thrown from the car. Thorough search was made at the area last night. Well, if that hood in the hospital doesn't die, maybe he can help us. Steffel's been in surgery. Doctor said it'll be a couple of hours before he can talk. I insist on hearing what this man Steffel has to say. I know how you people protect each other. You keep in touch with Lieutenant Ballinger and Captain Thomas. They're handling the investigation. Oh, uh, I'll need some information about your employees, you know, letters of application, reference letters, things of that nature, because this could possibly be an inside job. And don't worry, we'll find your money. I doubt that very much. Has he been checked out? He's an honest man, Frank. Yeah, kind of questions everybody else's honesty. And I hope you can clear this up fast. I hate to have to suspend Dave Price. Still, he was alone at the car when Langley went to call for help. And you think Price may have... Uh... I don't think anything. All I know is that the bank sent two bags of money to Maxwell, and only one turned up. Yeah. Dave's captain was only following regulations, and Dave had had an opportunity to steal. He might have to face a board of inquiry, and he could lose his badge. There. Hello, Frank. This is my partner, Langley. How do you I think I've got it, Frank. There had to be a third man. Did you see him? No. Well, I guess with all the junk in the yard, a third man could have gotten away without being noticed. What did you do exactly after Langley left, Dave? Well, I picked up the money bag, loaded my gun, and then looked around the lot. Did you hear anything? No, I was just taking normal precautions. 
Well, how long were you here alone? Two or three minutes, then the crowd started gathering. Captain Gray calling car M14. M14, Gray calling. M14, go ahead. Frank, Stemples regained consciousness. Maxwell will meet you at the hospital, room 312. I'll be right over. Better make it fast. Doctor says he can't last. On my way. How are you feeling now? I'm Lieutenant Bollinger. Get out, copper. Let a man die in peace. The doc here says you're gonna be lucky. Luckier than your friends. What friends? Oh, didn't they tell you? They both died last night. Who are you kidding? We identify one of them as Mike Slade. We haven't identified the other one yet. Why don't you give us his name so we can notify his next of kin? You're crazy. There was only two of us, Slade and me. Okay, Al, so your pal got away. I don't know what you're talking about. We're gonna find him sooner or later. Is $20,000 missing? Come on, Al, who ratted out on you? Look, you don't owe him a thing. He left you and Slade to shoot it out, didn't he? Make me a deal. You name it. <laughs> you lying copper. I'm gonna die, ain't I? You guys don't make deals. <laughs> Ask the flatfoot that shot me. Ask him what? About the other bag. He picked both of them up and walked away. To the squad car, you mean? I oh, know. In the junkyard. When he came back, he only had one bag. Are you sure of that? You bet I am. That cop's got the money. He stashed it. I saw him. Now get out of here. Go on, get out. He said that he saw you stash the other bag. He's lying, Frank. There's only one bag. Seems to me like he knew what you were after, Frank. Yeah, that's what's bothering me. When you got to him, was he conscious? I'm not sure. Well, did you or your partner say anything to him about how many guys you were looking for? Yeah, I... I said there were two of them. Maybe that's what tipped him off. Well, he knew he was dying. What he said carries a lot of weight with some people. <laughs> Stemple was a cop hater. He'd say anything. Yeah. Well, oh, fingerprints, Sergeant Riley, please. Oh, Joe, Frank, when you dust that car for the metals company robbery... Yeah, yeah, that's right. We're looking for a third set of prints. Right. Okay, thanks. Price, I'm sorry, I have to place you under suspension. We'll do all we can to get you off the hook soon. Captain Thomas, Davis, no thief. The doctor had to make a report of Stemple's last words. It's a matter of record now, an accusation. And Maxwell demands action on his 20,000. I'll bet. Because the press room at police headquarters heard about Stemple's statement, Dave Price found himself in the headlines for the second straight day. But this time he was no hero. But the lab had come up with prints from the car, prints belonging to a third party. I ordered them checked and went out to see Dave. I found him with his girlfriend, Ruth Scanlon. She was a bookkeeper at the Shea Sammy. We talked about the fingerprints on the car. Frank! I know this man Maxwell's talking wildly. I don't care what any dying thief said. I know and you know, Dave didn't take that money. Well, sure I know, but now we gotta prove it, because that was a deathbed statement. But he's a thief and he lied. Yeah, but whenever there's any question about missing property, an investigation is routine, whether it's a civilian or a cop. Can't you find anybody that knows Stemple? He operated down in Texas and Oklahoma. I sent a wire down there, maybe they can fill us in. The worst part of it is I gotta sit around like a lump of clay. There's no regulation that says you can't help. How? You name it, Frank, I'll do anything. Frank! Keep me company, huh? Sure. Lieutenant Ballinger. Oh, yes, Captain. Report show he had a record. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. Remember those fingerprints, Dave? They belong to an ex-con by the name of Greg Cook. Good luck, darling.
but it's not as good as I'd hoped. Cook's never pulled anything up here. Nobody seems to know him. He picked up a few times, but there was only one conviction for disorderly. Yeah, but he's got a conviction down in Dallas, armed robbery. Picked up on suspicion in Oklahoma City, armed robbery. But the lab says these prints are anywhere from four days to a week old. Yeah. Greg Cook doesn't know that. Maybe we can throw a scare into him. I'll put out an APB. Maybe we can pick him up. There's only one thing. Unless we find that money in his possession, we haven't got a thing on him. Yeah. Well, Dave, why don't you take that photograph and nose around, usual sources of information. I'll make some phone calls. Well, Mr. Maxwell, won't you come in? You asked for an employee checkup, Lieutenant. Well, it seems one of my men saw Stemple's picture in the paper. It turns out he worked in the maintenance department. You worked for him? Yeah, for a week. Under the name of Al Stewart. I've got his employment card here. You were right about a possible inside angle. I thought the personal reference he gave would be of value to you. It's a woman. Thank you very much, Mr. Maxwell. I'll look right into this. We went to see the woman who had recommended Stemple for employment. Somehow it didn't make sense. She was Grace Richards, a singer in a nightclub. I'd met her around town and liked her. Come on in. Thanks. Do it at a TV studio in a half an hour. Well, what's it all about? Well, I'm afraid this is a little uh, police business. With me? No, it's about a character named Al Stemple. Well, Stemple? It doesn't register. Well, maybe you knew him under the name of Al Stewart. Grace, you recommended him for a job. Oh, that one. Oh, well, I don't really know him. He's from out of town. My friend asked me to help him out. As a matter of fact, I never even met him. Well, what'd he do? I said he was honest and a good worker. Well, maybe I better have a talk with your friend. Sure. Listen, I've got to catch a cab and run. Can't we talk on the oh, way? Well, hold on a minute, Grace. Uh, where do I run across this uh, friend? Uh, well, uh, come with me. He, he's meeting me. <laughs> Doesn't he have a name? Sure he does. Greg Cook. And Frank, I've never gone overboard like this before. He's what I've been looking for. I drove Grace to the studio. Now I was waiting for her friend, and maybe the third man in our case. My baby left, and that ain't right. The days are bad, it's worse at night. With no warm arms to hold me tight, the nights are cold, and that ain't right. I'm all shook up, can't eat a bite. A string without a kite. I thought that I had love controlled. It didn't hold. Now you know that ain't right. Who was right? Who was wrong? Who told lies all along? Who was weak? Who was strong? nothing left, there's nothing right. It's like someone turned out my light. I got a feeling you are happy, gay, and bright. You great cook? That yeah, that's right. What's it to you? Right. Well, I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Baby, that ain't right. Baby. This is official. Oh, man, get lost. All right, what's the beef? I haven't done nothing. Get your hands behind your head. Look, I've been clean for a year. You boys know it. I want to talk to you about a little robbery Monday night. Let's go downtown. Frank, what are you doing? Grace, will you tell this bum where I was Monday night? Why, you were with me. Well, really, it was. Look, Frank, I thought you wanted to talk about some guy named Stewart. That's what we're gonna do. Grace, he's trying to frame me. Get a lawyer. Cook's lawyer demanded that I put up proof or release the man at once. Cook knew we had nothing on him except a past friendship with Stemple. I could hold him on an open charge for 48 hours, but that wouldn't lead us to the missing money. I just don't understand your stubbornness, Lieutenant. 
Frank, you're so terribly wrong. It's a frame to clear that suspended cop. I think you better keep quiet. Why? I was never in the car. I don't buy your story how your prints got on the inside of that glass. Look, I told you. The window was halfway down, and I was standing outside. I had my hands over the glass, just like this. I leaned in to talk to Al. One day a week ago, I haven't seen him in years. That isn't incriminating. Frank, you can't push people around just because of someone they know. I meet all kinds in my job. Al Stemple was shot trying to escape from a robbery. Greg, is that... Honey, Al told me he was going straight. That's why I asked you to help him get that job. Uh, Lieutenant, Miss Richards can testify that Cook was in a TV studio audience watching her show at the time of the robbery. Oh. Let's go over that again, huh, Grace? The rehearsal was from 9 to 10. Greg was in the audience. The show was from 10 to 11. He met me backstage when I came off at 11. Well, how do you know he was in the audience during the show? I have eyes. I saw him, that's how. All right, Counsel, he can go. But I'll take you up on your offer. I'll have one of my men search his apartment. You guys don't even apologize, do you? Cook's apartment was clean so far as the missing money went. I put a 24-hour tail on him and set out to break his alibi. I questioned the ushers who were on duty at the TV studio the night of the robbery. One of them remembered seeing Cook leave the rehearsal and take a seat in the audience. But none saw him leave or return during the show. Cook's picture meant nothing to the factory guard who'd been shot in the robbery. He had a glimpse of two men with hat rims down and coat collars up, nothing more. He couldn't make positive identifications of either Stemple or Cook. I had one angle left, a hard one, a girl in love. And Grace was a decent type. If I could shake her faith in Cook, I might be able to break the alibi she gave him. I took her to the Shea Sammy for a cup of coffee. You heard what Frank said. The ushers didn't see Cook, and the head usher only saw him in the lobby. He had time to meet his friends, pull the job, and get back and meet you at 11 o'clock. Frank, it couldn't have happened that way. I know. I'm suggesting that you thought he was in the audience, but you didn't actually see him. But I did see him. We talked about the show afterward. He knew everything that went on. Why not? He saw the rehearsal. Boy, this is a new kind of third degree. Did you bring me here just to show me what a nice guy he is or something? Greg was right. You're trying to pin this on him just to help your friend. Well, Ruth, Dave, would you mind leaving us alone for a minute, please? <laughs> You finished with me. Nearly. Pretty nice combo, huh? Grace, when I came to your apartment yesterday looking for Stuart, I was also looking for Greg Cook, but I didn't know at that time he was your boyfriend until you told me. He didn't do it. Well, if he didn't, we're gonna have a lot of trouble proving the innocence of a very nice guy. So I'm sorry for him. But that's all I can be. You know, Ruth's a lot like you. Smart, good head on her shoulders. But the big difference between you two is that while well, she's in love with an underpaid policeman, and Grace, you're in love with the hood. I didn't know about his record. Greg loves me, and I trust him 100%. Enough to give him the key to your apartment. Well, what are you getting at? Well, we searched his place. A man who's got $20,000 has to hide it someplace. He doesn't have any $20,000, and he doesn't have my key. Well, you can't say I didn't try. May I go now? Well, of course. Well, Grace, uh, thanks for coming by. Huh? Don't mention it. <laughs>
somewhere? Where did you get that key? Now, don't you remember when you lost yours, honey? Well, I needed one, you know, to come in and out. What made you look for the money? You've been lying to me. You should have left well enough alone. I won't say anything. Take it. Take it all and just get out of here. Uh-uh. No, the cops aren't through asking questions yet. Now you got the big answer. You'll be gone. They'll never find you. Go pack some things. You're coming with me. Honey, I can't. Go on. All right. How'd you make out? So far, not so good. You know, I don't think Grace is involved in this. Just a girl in love. Yeah, well, they get hit harder sometimes. But we can't touch Cook unless we can find the money in his hand. Yeah. Well, what's this? Teletype from New Orleans. Cook's got a record there, too. Came in answer to my wire. Yeah. Maybe this will help convince Grace, huh? To do what? To play it my way for once. Don't answer it. What? It might be the club. Hello? Oh, hello. This is Lieutenant Ballinger. Is Miss Richards there, please? It's Ballinger. Well? Tell him I'm not home yet. She's not home yet. Okay, thanks. I'll call later. That was our boy. He just made another one of his little mistakes because she said he didn't have a key. Come on, hurry up. Mm, I, I ought to call the club, tell them how long I'll be away. Answer it. Who is it? Lieutenant Ballinger, Miss Richards. Get rid of him. You say anything, I'll kill them both of you. Frank, I can't talk to you now. Cook was here a little while ago. Where is he now? All right, Cook, come out of there. You're covered. to Joliet. But the hardest part about the case was what it did to Grace. It broke her heart and all the song in her. She left town for good. But when one Grace leaves, two more turn up. Somebody said, that's why the blues are written. 